we're just going to do a quick run through about the engineer of the future. So a little bit about British Gas New Energy. Um, this is a part of British Gas set up to make money and deliver a business out of renewable, low carbon and energy efficiency. So a range from heat pumps, biomass boilers, solar thermal, PV, all those sort of uh, skills in there. But before we get on to this presentation, I thought what we'd do is let's take a look at the past. And hopefully this video will run and you'll be able to see um, what the past looked like before we look at the engineer of the future. Sixties, not only saw the first man in space, but great leaps forward in home gas appliances. My representatives had a busy time. Not today, I'll pay you Friday. I said I'll pay you Friday. I'm from the gas board, madam. You wanted to know about the new water heaters. Oh, of course, I thought you were a chap for the club money. Come in, I've just put the kettle on. Thanks. Straight along the passage. Here I am on one of the new estates that was springing up absolutely everywhere. It's certainly nice and warm in here this morning, Matt. Yes, it's the central evening. Oh, that's a nice thing, old job. How does it work? Well, it's very simple, really. The pipes run round the house and the water's heated by glass. It's called small ball heating or something. Small ball heating? Yes. Yeah. And there are some glass boards outside. He'll tell you all about it. I see. Well, could you tell me something about wash boilers? I need one for Johnny's nappies and things. Aye, right, certainly, madam. We've got this model here and some illustrations of others. Perhaps well, look, like there I am, one. still doing my bit. <laughs> That's not bad, a silly the man from the gas pool. So, um, that was a little trip down memory lane that, uh, hands up in the audience, anyone who's around under conversion? Gentlemen at the back there, so you'll be able to uh, answer a few questions about that, but just to give you an idea, when I started at British Gas in 1975, we were just on the back end of conversion, which finished in 1977. So the engineer's job was very different. What we're going to do now is sort of try and take this forward to the future and see what the engineer's job will look like in the future. Before we do that, I'm just going to run through a few quick slides to say why will the engineer's job change and what is the, um, the vision of the future. So real change is coming. Whether we like it or not, the Climate Change Act is going to deliver huge change in our industry. So even though the government have hinted that they may come off some of these targets in terms of if they cost too much money, there is still a huge driver to make this happen. Good examples is trying to build a house now, you need to hit a certain percentage renewables. So even British Gas, we're building our office at the moment we need to put 17% renewables in there. So whether we like it or not, British Gas will be putting a biomass boiler and a heat pump in our new offices in Oxford. So climate change, regulations, you know, this is, this is going to happen. Declining demand through a lot of this regulation, customers' bills are going to be falling and customers' consumption is going to be falling as well. And that's why British Gas New Energy was set up to actually start to promote the very things that are going to reduce consumption. New forms of generation, so a huge influx of PV for example, solar thermal driven by feeding tariff and what we're going to talk about today is a, the latest one to come out is the renewable heat incentive. So my role at the moment in British Gas is to look at renewable heat technologies, biomass heat pumps. Low carbon vehicles, how do they fit into the mix of an engineer's world? Well, effectively, you'll see on the, the next slide how it, this all fits into the home of the future. But just give you an idea of the size that the, we think this market's going to be. Chris Hune here is talking about a 3.2 trillion. Now, I haven't got a clue how much that is in, uh, in my world, but it sounds a huge opportunity all around energy management, low carbon and environmental goods. We think... The start of all this is going to be smart metering because the smart metering has to happen in 16 million homes in the UK. So 
and each home is going to have two smart meters. As soon as those smart meters go into the home, the customer has huge visibility and control of the way they use their energy. So we believe the battleground is the smart home of the future, delivered by smart metering. And when you look at this slide here, you start with sort of microgeneration at the top, e-health, the sort of uh, all the information that you will get in the home driven through that smart meter. So there's a real battleground emerging. And I'm going to talk about some of this, and this is where the electric vehicle starts to fit into the home. And it's sort of strange that already I'm talking to engineers that are fitting smart meter, uh, sorry, electric vehicle charging points, fitting smart meters. And as we're fitting the smart meters, we're putting boiler controls in the Rini boilers. So my BlackBerry here, quite sadly, can turn my boiler off at home. So if the wife upsets me, we have a very cold house at home. So I just sort of t turn the heating down. But those sort of technologies are really going to make the engineer of the future's world completely different from what you've just seen with the in the past where it was uh, conversion. So energy efficiency, security, home control, controlling your boilers, controlling all this remotely is a very different world and a skill set for the engineers. And there'll be a really interesting skill set of competitors entering this market. So previously when British Gas were a nationalized business doing conversion, look at some of the names up there who have all gone on the record to say they're going to be involved in the smart home. So there's a huge amount of companies who are all expecting to move into this market and will be needing engineers and skills and people who can put all these together. And there's a huge range of opportunity. I don't know whether you can see these slides here, but around the energy efficient products in the home and how they all fit together, there is a huge opportunity for coming up with a, um, a service to the customer that actually starts to draw all these together. So new technologies for the smart home. I'm going to concentrate in this presentation on the renewable heat incentive ones, where they fit around the home and where the engineer's skills will be required. So where does renewable heating fit into our home? Well, first of all, you can have a, a heat pump outside or a biomass boiler, let's say, for example. So just the way you heat your home is going to be completely different. The government think there's going to be something like 2.6 million heat pumps uh, in the UK. So, you know, a big change back to electric central heating. Um, we were with DEC last night and trying to press them on the renewable heat incentive and when's the renewable heat incentive going to come out for heat pumps. They're absolutely committed to Britain decarbonizing electricity through nuclear at one end and the heat pumps, electric central heating at the other end. So a real skill set of understanding how these work. Secondly, the engineer of the future, we believe, is going to have to have some real skills in low temperature heating. If you look what um, drove the heat pump market in Sweden, it wasn't the fact that they loved heat pumps, it was the fact that they already had low temperature heating systems in Sweden. So heat pumps, for example, work beautifully with underfloor heating and low temperature heating systems. So a really different skill set of design and a heating system to take low temperature heating and heat pumps together. Where we've seen the rise of the combi in the, few, in the past few years, we think there's going to be a huge return back to stored hot water. And the reason for that is these stored hot water systems are actually a battery in the house. So instead of electricity, where you have your PV and you can't actually store it, we believe that actually putting a storage system in there will give you the ability to store energy in the home. So British Gas are doing a trial at the moment in the northwest, where we're putting in 1,500 heat pumps with storage and giving the electricity supply the ability to shut off the heat pumps. So when people put their, all their kettles on together in half time at the FA Cup final, the electricity supply will be able to turn the heat pumps off for 15 minutes. So a really interesting dynamic of the, uh, the way this all connects together. If you look then, some of these technologies can then start to work together. So in this slide, you'll have solar thermal on the roof, an actual battery in the house collecting some of this solar thermal, a heat pump, and even we're experimenting at the moment in putting that heat back down into the ground, so recharging a thermal store in the ground. Now, for me as an engineer, what that would do, 
previously to just a heat loss calculation. You think of the complexity of actually working out how much heat you get in here, how much heat you can store, and how much heat you can put back into the ground. It's quite a different heat loss calculation with the underfloor heating than an, egg, uh, an engineer would have had before. So a real different uh, change of skill set. And there will be a potentially a renewable gas supply. Now the way renewable gas works, you won't actually see this and you won't have a separate connection, but renewable gas is incentivized under the renewable heat incentive and will be a part of the mix in the future. So, how is an engineer going to progress into all this home of the future? So we've talked about the battleground, we've talked about where they're going in the future and the sort of skill sets they'll need. These, all these people at the moment exist within British Gas and we've got a transition plan to take people from loft installers, solar panel fitters, white goods engineers and how they can transition through these skill sets and get them over here to be electricians, gas technical engineers. So all of these are our existing engineers. And if you look where they're going in the future, we're going to be taking our existing engineers and actually transitioning through renewables and smart. Remember, smart meters is the key to kick all this off. And getting gas engineers becoming renewable engineers, gas engineers, renewable solar thermal, and transitioning over from the engineer of the past that you saw with the sort of conversion type gas engineer into engineers of the future. And my question now, I'm going to take some questions and answers, but my question would be, do you think we can do it? Are these people supermen wearing their underpants on the outside knowing all this? And is this possible? We've got a training centre at the moment in Leicester where we've actually got all these renewables in there and taken engineers through these training packages. So, questions? Unless Graham wants to start the karaoke early. Any questions, skill set, training, can we do it? Excellent. Well, in that case, thank you very much for your time, and uh, hopefully it was useful as the engineer of the future. Thank you.